I praise you, O my Father. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am. You are above all, and I thank you today. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you for the blood that you shed. Thank you for the agony you went through so that we may have life and we may have it more abundantly. I thank you today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday to each and every one of you. That same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in this place today. Yes, to quicken us, to empower us to be the vessels the Father wants us to be. If you have your Bibles today, open with us to, I, I know this is going to seem like a strange Easter message or a place to go to for an Easter message, but Open the first Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one, if you would stand for the reading of God's words and remain standing as we pray. First Peter chapter 1, starting with verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope or a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Let's go back to verse 3. I'm going to read that last part right there. Who has begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for the word. I thank you that the word is anointed. Now, Father, I ask you to anoint the service this night, this day. Father, let my words be plain, let my words be clear. Father, that, Lord, we can leave this place knowing that we have a living hope. Father, that you will encourage our hearts today. And, Father, that you will empower us to be the men and women we need to be. Now, Father, hide me behind the cross that we might see Jesus high and lifted up Father, we give you praise for all things that everything be done for thy glory and thy honor. In Christ's most holy name we pray and ask. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. You may be seated. You know, there's something that seems to be missing in our society today, and that is hope. We have so many today that seem to be living without any hope. You go, and I, I, especially after COVID here, it seems like there's been a loss of hope for anything. Lives of so many have been crippled by fear, dread of tomorrow. What's going to happen next? Even still, and, and I don't really want to get off on this because I know this is a touchy subject, but with this being election you, there's many hopes that the next administration will be better. There's many hopes that 
If we're not careful, we, we can realize that the hope of our future generation may be in trouble. You see, hope is something that many of us need to realize that we need in order to live. Doctors and scientists have proven that if a patient is taken and if, once, if they've ever been given a death sentence, if you will, for lack of better way to say that, if they've ever been told they've only got so long to live or whatever, or even if they've not been told how long, but even if the doctors have said there is nothing else we can do, if that person ever loses hope, that person's gone almost like that. It has been shown and proven over and over again. In, in preparing for this message, like, I came across an article online that I, I thought was, would, would prove it real good. I can't remember the other people's names, but the, uh, the, there was a story about a grandfather who was healthy. Had, he was married, had a bunch of grandkids. And he was went to the store one morning, and as he was coming out, he started feeling a little weird. And, by the time he got to his car, he fell to the top parking lot with a heart attack. Massive heart attack. Some of the other customers seen him quickly, started getting called 911. Some started doing CPR, and, and he was without oxygen for over seven minutes. They rushed into the emergency room, and the doctors come in and told the grandmother that. He, 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 it's a hopeless situation. He's not going to make it. He's, he's not going to leave. He might as well just take him off the lock or over. They don't put him on that. He, he's not going to live. He's not going to make it. But she decided, I'm going to hold on. I'm not going to give up. She said, there's still hope. And she continued to hold on and Days went by, I believe it was about nine days, I think it was about three months went by. The doctor kept telling us, listen, it, 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 it's hopeless. We're not trying to be urgent, but it's hopeless. He said, no, I'm holding on. I'm holding on. But on that 94th day, he, be, he woke up. He was in a coma, he woke up, began to talk. They said, okay, there's going to be some really brain damage. He began to talk, they brought in a cell phone, they had pictures of all his grandkids. He named every single one of his grandkids. He told what year it was, he told who the president was. I mean, they barraged him with all kinds of questions. He acted on every single one. That mother had, that grandmother had held on with hope. But you see, too often people lose hope in the midst of the situation. And we say it's beyond hope. And we begin to just prepare for the water. But friend, we can never lose hope. The whole message of the resurrection gives us hope. It brings us hope in a time of need. It brings us hope for healing. Hope for bondage to be broken. Hope in, for, in forgiveness. Uh, hope in death. Uh, hope for eternal life and glory. And because of the resurrection of Jesus, resurrection hope became cause of the, to, because the tomb is empty. We must realize that we have a hope today. Now let's, let's go back in time if we can. 2,000 years ago, nearly 2,000 years ago, to sit to the city of Jerusalem, the events have unfolded 
The Sanhedrin has gotten it recently. They have taken Christ on Thursday night. They have taken him. He has been beaten. He has been despised. He has been whipped with a cat of nine tails. He has been through false accusations. They have brought false witnesses against him. They had two or three illegal trials that night. The 20 more the pilot falsely accused him. But before they had told him more than him, they began to beat him and spit on him and everything. And these are religious people. They just some people doing this to him. Think about it. They blindfolded him. I mean, they blindfolded him and started spitting on him and hit him and said, Who hit him? Prophesied to him. Made a game out of him. Took him to Pilate. Pilate tried to let him go, but couldn't. They tried to move the crowd to try to crucify him. Think about this just a minute. He, the, the, the crowd showed a robber, a murderer, or a just man. Because they could not stand the truth. They took him, they now they took him and be put him before the uh, platoon of soldiers that took him and they literally whipped his back open with a whip and a cat of nine tails. Now I know, I know we often say that you know the Jews have a law that you can only be whipped 40 times that they do, that they do only have that law. But what we forget is Jesus was not ripped according to Jewish law. He was ripped according to Roman law. The Romans had no such law. They could rip you to die. But they ripped him. The Bible says his business, his form, his body was so torn, ripped open, so bloody. They had a crown of thorns upon their backs, on his Forehead, they had drove in with a rod hitting him over the head. And they mocked him. Kneeling before him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Make him fun of Put a purple robe around him, make him fun of Then took that robe off of him. Took him and t- they took him to the heavy cross. I went and took him to that cross. Nailed the pipes in his hands and feet. And hung there for six times between heaven and earth. Bear in mind your sins. I hope hope to you be lost for the disciples. The disciples said, you know, this was our hope. As a matter of fact, if you read Luke 24, we Jesus appealed to two of them on the road to Emmaus. And he sees them sad. This is after the resurrection. He sees them sad and everything begins to talk to them. And one of them is named Cleopas. And Cleopas said, We had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. They seen him die. Now they're living in the field. High. He had been taken, he had been wrapped, he'd been made ready for burial, he'd been put in a burial ball too. So good that they the still Lord. Now it's not to be understood about this tomb. All tombs are like this, I just think. The stone, when they put the stone down, it actually falls into a slot, if you will. It's really easy to move the stone down into the slot to get it out. The stone is about four feet high to cover the opening. It is approximately around 200, 250 pounds. Women, uh, a woman's soul couldn't move it. 
One or two men most likely would not have been able to move it. I wouldn't have been able to move it. And they would have rolled this thing. To be moved, it had to be rolled uphill and inside. Mary Magdalene John chapter 20 tells a story. And Sister Shepherd did a wonderful message today in Mark's gospel. She goes to that too. And they're wondering, according to the other gospel, who is, who, who's going to roll that stone back? They sit there and they see that that stone, Mary sees that that stone is rolled back. And go and tell the young disciples, according to the gospel of Matthew, uh, gospel of John. But Mary, after Peter and John come and see, according to the gospel of John, they see no one in, they see the tomb is empty, they see the white clothes are washed up, the napkin around the head is folded up. They leave, but Mary is still in that tomb, according to John. She looks in there, her eyes, tears that flow. The Bible says she looked in and then she seen two men sit for the body of the Lamb. She did, and, and they ask a woman, why are you weeping? She says, because they're taking my Lord away and I don't know what they like to Can I tell you something about uh, when we lose hope with grief, pain and sorrow. Sometimes it can cause, it can blind us to the obvious. Even though we try to find out. They see an empty tomb. No next bag was I showed up. But it goes a little bit farther than that. See, Mary, when she got that word, when she stood back up and talking to the two angels, according to John 20, she turned around and she seen Jesus. I didn't recognize him. And he asked the woman, why we just out and seek us out? She said, uh-uh. She supposed to be the God of the Lord of the so if you take the body away and lay it, we, to tell me where he's going to lay, we we'll lay him and I'll take him out and take him away. So grieved. So hope is gone. That she don't even recognize him. See, sometimes... We can get into such a state of grief when that hopelessness grabs us that we can develop a real kind of vision. It's what the expression, not seeing the trees for the forest, or it might be not seeing the forest for the trees, one or the other. But she was so, she seen them, put her heart so heavy. It only, she only didn't realize it. But Jesus called her and said, Mary. There must be something about the way he calls our name because when he, when he called her by name, the Bible said she turned back around and, and she looked at him and said, Rabbana, or Master. She realized. You see, hope many times will cause us to lose all uh, uh, everything that we have believed in and gotten away from. All we can see is the pain. All we can see is the holiday. All we can see is the shadow dreams that are on the ground. All we can see is the the the. the 
broken promises, if you will, if it was there. All we can see is the, is the sadness of it, and we cannot find any hope in the midst of the situation. She looked at the empty tomb. She looked at Jesus to start with, and yet her heart was so in hopelessness. That she could not see it. You see, there's something about hope it, 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 that we must realize. Romans 8 24 through 25 tells us, For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for? Verse 25, but if we hope for that we see not, then we, then do we with patience wait for it. The resurrection brings us hope. As a matter of fact, Paul said in 1 Corinthians, 15 verse 18, if this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If this is the only life that we have any hope in, we are of all men most miserable. Because the woman if I see something, Already manifested before me, just no reason to hope for it. I've been married to Lydia for 16 years. Oh, well, 16 years. Now, if I stand up here and tell you, well, I, I, I really hope the end loves me. Don't probably look at me, it's kind of funny, I just hope for my life. I think. I mean, really, I'll be kind of funny, like, been married to for 15 years, you don't know yet. And I'm like, well, I've been hoping for it. I said I wouldn't know that. That might be a bad night, I don't know. But the thing is, we don't hope for something we already see. There's no need to hope for it. We hope for what we can't see. See the disciples. They saw Jesus die. They seen the buried. All hope is gone. But then Luke 24, the, uh, the other gospel tells us so. that the men come to the tomb. They see the stone roll back. They see the head of wisdom. They read and they say good news from the other disciples. But you must see, I want us to understand that Jesus had done told the disciples for the, to at least three times, right before he went to the cross, I'm, I will go to Jerusalem, I'm going to be taken, I'm going to be crucified, I'm going to die, and on the third day, I will rise again. And yet they did not get it. All their hope and dreams will come. And Cleopas, and the Bible says another, another one named Disciple. It didn't. Some people believe that he had a wife named Mary. That's his son think it was him and his wife walking back to Emmaus on that day, on that resurrection day. The Bible says that they're walking, they're sad, they're talking about the events that have happened. Jesus comes walking up alongside them. But they cannot even see him, but they don't even realize it's Jesus because it's here, because he always just hides himself from them. I don't know if it's because they were just so grieved. It may be because it's where it makes the body a little different, I don't know. Because remember now, the last time they see Jesus, He's hanging on the cross. He's bloody. He looks like a piece of meat. I don't mean to be so worried, but it does look like it's a raw piece of meat. 
created cut from the whips and all of this lined up. I don't know how many of you ever seen all these different Christian movies that play the crucifixion. It's nothing compared to how it really was. Because it would be too grotesque. It would be too grotesque. The passion probably comes a little bit to the closest. This is the last I've seen of him. Three days ago, and I'm the third day, they're walking through the mayors. Jesus comes alongside, he tends to talk to them. The three officers say, I guess it's all open. Oh, he was the one to redeem us, but now. Oh, but then we got the news too that the women went to, to uh, the tomb today, and they, they said the tomb was empty, and two of the apostles went, and they, uh, Peter and John, they went, and uh, they, 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 but, you know, I mean, all this is strange, and we, well, we're just trying to get out of Jerusalem. I, I know the scriptures don't say this, but. I imagine this is what goes through mind. We just try to get out of the because, you know, the, the same hatred is probably just to be on the head, huh? Going to get up the rest of the socks as fuck. I mean, this part of going out through all the minds. All our hopes. Jesus begins to talk to him. The Bible says that the Bible, the heart's born within him and he opened up the scripture. And they even said it. And they made that journey. They went and they, when they realized who it was, they went back full of hope to let the other disciples know that he had risen. When you lose hope, all you see is the emptiness of the situation. You appeal to develop tunnel vision, as I said, the situation, mental and spiritual tunnel vision. The only thing you can perceive is hopelessness and loss. The answer may be directly upon us, you and I, but it's not. But, but it, it is there, but we cannot see it. The Easter is a reminder that God is in the business of awakening hope in the hearts of people who are feeling hopeless. We must realize and understand that the message of Easter is a message of hope. We may look like it's hopeless and everything is gone, but we serve a God who is on the throne who will give us the hope that we need indeed in time need. We serve a God who will come through for us. You may have heard, you, you may be living in a Friday. Maybe you're living in a Friday and you think that you've got some bad news and it looks awful. But thirdly, it goes to Saturday. That news has just gotten a little bit worse and it's a hopeless situation. And you think, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to pull out of this. But friend, hold on. Sunday uh, is coming. Uh, you may be in a mist. Uh, uh, you may be worried uh, about some cloud of blues uh, that may be getting out in the world and doing things uh, you never thought they would do. Uh, it may be Friday to you, but you and then the Saturday you find out they've gotten worse. Uh, it's gotten a lot worse than what you ever imagined or thought, uh, but I want you to know uh, Sunday uh, is coming. Uh, you may have a physical disability, a physical ailment. Uh, you may have been coughing and have a pain. Uh, you went to the doctor uh, and just get test done. Uh, you, they say we don't know about it yet. Uh, it may be Friday. Uh, you may get the results uh, and they say it's cancer uh, or some other incur incurable disease uh, and you only got uh, a certain amount of time. Uh, you may feel sweet with you may feel absolutely hopeless, but I want you to know what uh, Sunday uh, is coming. Right. 
Whatever that situation may be, God will give you hope. Jesus rose from the dead to give you and I hope. But you know the greatest hope that we have. Do you know what that greatest hope is? Turn in your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Except we come very close to it. Second Corinthians chapter 15. You go to a graveyard. You look at that. He said that there's no hope to ever see him again. Because of God. He said that there's a silence. You want to win. Why? How? He looked so cold. So fine. There is a finality. There is in the natural sense. There is a finality to death. In the natural sense, there is. Remember that first I read right ago? Paul said, it's only in this life that we had hope in Christ we would be most miserable. But Paul continued on down in Corinthians talking in 15 and he covers many aspects of it. But then he comes to these final words. Starting with verse 50 of chapter 15. Now this, I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. It kind of sounds like, well, no, we're flesh and blood. Be no, with Jesus come back, I just had to start. With Jesus, we appeal to the disciples. They're scared to talk to him. I never really thought about this. But they're scared to talk. You no, know, they're scared. And he just, he just gives them his hands. He just handles me. And you see, I've got flesh and bones. As people don't have flesh and bones. He doesn't say he has blood anymore. But he still leads in all of this. 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. Have you got something? We shall not all sleep. Those that are going on in Christ are sleeping, my friend, according to the Bible. They're not dead. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet the shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Woo! Think about it. 
And it could be very soon here. That trumpet's going to sound. And there was one of the graves that were around here. They had a lost loved one. They had a lost, they had a lost Christian. You know, it's, they, they, they're going to be raised uh, incorruptible. And we, uh, we, we show our love and remain according to First Thessalonians chapter 4. Shall be changed. For this corruption must put on in corruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on in corruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass this saying that is written. I'm going to stop for that just a minute. We have a hope that's coming, a blessed hope, according to Titus chapter 2. That one day that there's going to be a trumpet that's going to sound you and I, which will go, will be right, will be changed, be raised to be together with Christ forever. Yes. Yes. There is a hope that we have yes. that the final enemy, listen to this, that we're going to be able to say death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death. Where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, he is the first fruits. And because of that, you and I have a blessed hope that we can rely and know that one day we're going home to be with Jesus. Woo! Oh, my. Friends, I don't believe it's going to be too much longer. You see, we have this hope that that final, if, that will one day death, it's going to be finally taken. The Bible says in Revelation, death and hell will be defeated and will be thrown into the lake of fire. And we, which are alive and we are in Christ, we shall go to be with Jesus. Forever, all of this because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our Lord, stand our Lord this Lord. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father. Master, that you came, you gave me life for us. I thank you, Lord. The Father, there is nothing too difficult for you. And God, that you are more than able to do all things. I thank you today for that cross. For Lord, if it had not been for that cross, it would, there would have been no resurrection. I thank you that on that cross, you took my place and you became my propitiation. You paid the penalty for me. You paid that debt you did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I thank you for that today. I thank you that even when it seemed all hope was lost, that on that third day, Something took happen in that tomb. Death was cast aside. You came forth victoriously from the grave with power or death and hell. 
You have the keys of life and death. Now, oh Lord Jesus, thank you. That because of your resurrection, we now have a blessed hope that one day if we hold on, if we stay true, we will rise again. Those that have gone on and slain or dead in Christ in you, they will be raised incorruptible. And we which are alive and remain, we are going to be called up to them and we will be changed and be with Christ forever. Father, I thank you. I thank you for it right now, Master. In Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus, mighty, mighty name, I thank you for it, Father, that you are more than able, God, to do all things. Now, Father, if there be any listening to the sound of my voice that don't know you, I ask the Lord to set them free. Father, we can walk in freedom today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.